What's up guys, this is Stefan from Apprentice IT and in this video we are going to install Active Directory with all the required features. After the installation is complete we shall create our first organizational unit. We are going to create a first username and sign in with that username from our Windows 10 workstation. Before we begin the installation I am going to make a short introduction regarding Active Directory. So a server which is running Active Directory is called a domain controller. What is a domain controller? A domain controller is a server that responds to security authentication requests within a computer network. This server is responsible for allowing host access to domain resources. And when we say domain resources or hosts, we refer to computers or other devices connected to a computer network. To give you an example, when a user logs into a computer, that is part of a Windows domain, Active Directory checks the submitted password and determines whether the user is a system administrator or a normal user. Alright, so let's get started with the installation. Uh, you need to open Server Manager, go to Add Roles and Features. The wizard opens and click Next. Select Role-based or Feature-based installation. We have the same server as uh, in the last video, so click Next. Now, from this list, you need to select Active Directory Domain Services. Okay, so check this. We need to add all the features and click Next. If you want to add more features, you can do so, but for the purposes of this video, this is not required, so click Next. Now, we have, like in the uh, DHCP installation wizard, we have some information which is relevant for you to read. For example, uh, users can still log on to the network in the case of server outage, install a minimum of two domain controls for a domain. So you need this to have a minimum redundancy. And also, Active Directory Domain Services requires a DNS server to be installed on the network. In our case, we will be using this machine as uh, a DNS server so we do not have a separate DNS server for this purpose okay so let's click next now the installation will begin make sure you check this box in case any um, server restart is required it will be done automatically let's click install okay so now the wizard starts the installation progress we're going to come back when it finishes Alright, so now the feature installation is complete. We need to promote this server to a domain control. Make sure you click on this button here. And to select the deployment operation, since it's our first domain control, we're going to add a new forest. So select this option here and specify a root domain name. In our case, it's going to be test.local and click next now we have to select functional levels of the new forest and the root domain as a best practice it's very important to note that uh, you should select the highest the highest Windows Server option available alright so Windows Server 2016 at the fourth functional level, Windows Server 2016 at the domain functional level because uh, if you select this uh, option, these options, it's uh, you're going to have access to all the Active Directory's features, the latest Active Directory's features. We need to specify domain control capabilities. In our case, yes, we, we need domain name server, we need a DNS server here, and a global catalog. Okay, this is already grayed out. Uh, since it's a new forest. Okay, what is a, gl a global catalog? A global catalog is a domain control that stores copies of all Active Directory objects in the forest. It stores a complete copy of all objects in the directory of your domain and a partial copy of all objects of all other forest domains. Now we need to type in the directory services restore mode password. What is this? DSRM password. The directory services restore mode is basically a safe mode boot option for Windows Server domain controllers. Okay, 
DSRM allows an administrator to repair or recover an Active Directory database. So this password provides the administrator with a backdoor to the database in case something goes wrong later on, but it does not provide access to, to the domain or to any services. So make sure you type in a password you will remember afterwards. Right, now let's click next. We do not have a different DNS server than this machine, so in this case we are going to click next. Once the NetBIOS name assigned verification is complete, make sure you click next. Usually this process takes a couple of seconds. Now in this window, we are specifying the location of the Active Directory database, log files and sysvol. We are going to leave them as default and click next. Now we can review everything we have previously completed. So our full configuration to this point is available in this list and we can click next. A prerequisite check is required before beginning the installation. Once this is complete, you can hit the install button. In our case, all prerequisite checks have passed successfully. So let's click install. We're going to set this video on pause and come back after it's finished. All right, so now my computer is being restarted. The server is being restarted because Active Directory has finished uh, installing. And once uh, we reboot, we'll go back to the process. All right, guys, so now we're back to the login screen on the Windows Server machine. And we are prompted to enter our administrator password with the domain entered here, as you can see. So let's log in. Now in our server manager, we should have the Active Directory domain services appear uh, right here and also the DNS server which has been installed. All the features, as you can see, we have the uh, server right here, Active Directory, DNS, everything seems to be working properly. And let's get started and create our first organizational unit. You need to head over to Tools, select Active Directory Users and Computers. Let's make this bigger. Now, here's our server. Expand this so you can see a list of computers, users. These are the built-in objects within our server. And if we want to create an organizational unit, but let's talk a bit about this for a second. An organizational unit is a subdivision basically within Active Directory and in this organizational unit you can place users, groups, computers and even other organizational units. So basically the purpose of this organizational unit is to mirror your organization's functional or business structure. And in our case let's say we want to make, let's right click here and make a new organizational unit and name it IT okay and within this IT let's say uh, this uh, organizational unit represents our IT department at work and within this organizational unit let's create a first username so right click on this organizational unit new user I want to call it Stefan the Apprentice 
and let's create Stefan dot be apprentice username okay now let's click next let's make a password for Stefan which is going to be coca-cola 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 okay and click next and finish okay so this error was intended because Windows is very strict regarding passwords, so you need to set um, a password of minimum eight characters. You need to have a special character, a digit, and uh, uppercase letters. Okay, so I'm going to set a more complex password. Make sure you remember them and click next finish right so Stefan the apprentice username has been created now if you want to add more information about Stefan we can right click on him and select properties and here you have information like office emails web pages and everything you might want to personalize this user with let's hit apply and okay all right so now we have our first username created in active directory domain services our first organizational unit and our intention is to sign in with this username from our windows 10 workstation and to do so we need to join our local workstation to the domain and how do we do this we simply select uh, we right click on this PC select properties and here we need to change these settings to rename this computer chain its domain click change so let's click on change and we are going to join this to the test dot local domain hit OK and now it's asking us for an account with permission to join the domain and obviously we have access to such an account it's our administrator account and we're going to type in our administrator password and if you've done everything right this should be the correct prompt welcome to the test.local domain okay after this uh, setting is complete the computer will ask for restart so we need to restart this PC and we're going to restart it now and come back when we when this is finished okay guys so now our uh, Windows 10 machine has rebooted and we need to sign in with the username we previously created in Active Directory so let's select other user from here and type in Stefan dot the apprentice with the password we previously created and now it should ask us to change the password And as you can see it's asking us to change the password before signing in so click OK now we're going to enter a new password and now the password has been changed let's click OK as you can see I already have this prompt Stefan the Apprentice and obviously we're in the Windows screen where everything is getting ready for you now another important step that I forgot to mention is that after signing in to the domain with this server we need to do something for the DHCP server that we previously configured in the other video so at DACP, DHCP, we need to select this button here and complete our DHCP configuration in the sense 
that we need to authorize this DHCP server on this computer. So you need to click next. We're going to use these credentials, our administrator credentials, and click commit. Okay, so now uh, we're going to close this. And we need to mention the fact that signing in from the Windows 10 machine would not work if this DHCP server uh, had not been authorized. Okay guys, I hope you like this lab. Please let me know in the comments if you managed to get this working. Also make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon for more interesting tutorials. Thank you very much for attending. Ciao!